We welcome tonight Peter Ryan speaking on the history of Rodale and Rodale and the legal fraternity in Gawler. Thank you for, for that. Um, it was a, a pleasure to be asked. Um, Brian, in his usual organised self, asked me a very long time ago whether I would do this this talk, and um, and um, it's it's a it's a great pleasure to be able to do that. I'd certainly like to acknowledge the large amount of research that um, my business partner Nick Pullman has done. He's responsible for the slides, so if you find any errors in the slides or can't find them, talk to Nick. Don't talk to me. Um, <laughs> Acknowledge the great work of the Gawler history team too. Um, it was four years ago that you asked me how do I set this up. Um, so I hope that any advice that I gave you about that has, has worked. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> so obviously Nick and I are partners in, in Riddell and Riddell. Um, Riddell and Riddell has been a um, law firm in Gawler since um, around about 1854. I'm conscious of every time I turn my head the sound volume varies so hopefully that's not too annoying for you. Um, for, uh, for us Riddell and Riddell is really the history of two families. The Riddell family um, and in later years um, around about World War II the Bills family. Um, it, however, of course, continues with many other people in, involved at the moment. Um, Nick and myself as partners, we have six other lawyers working with us and employ nine non-lawyer non staff. So it's become a reasonably large business um, in, in Gawler. The On our website, you won't be able to see it very clearly on here because it's a little bit dark, but. Um, if you go to our website, you can see a, a timeline which says a few key dates in the in the history of Riddell and Riddell. 1854 was the year that the first Riddell, John Riddell, um, came to, to Gawler. I'll talk a little bit more about him in a moment. Um, and so on, and I'll go through those those dates as we um, progress through, through my talk. As I said, John Riddell was the um, founder of um, um, Riddell uh, as a law firm. He came, he was born in England, he came to uh, Australia looking at um, the, yeah, went originally to the Ballarat Goldfields. He was a lawyer in um, England, um, realised that digging for gold was probably a little bit harder work than he was perhaps used to and found his way to, to Gawler was married or to Adelaide to start with was married in 1854 worked for with a lawyer in Adelaide for a little while and then came out to, to Gawler to, to work on his own account very shortly after that he um, became the town clerk of Gawler um, was instrumental in setting up Gawler as a separate local government identity from the Barossa um, and um, on the basis that um, he didn't think that the Council of Barossa was doing the right thing by the residents of Gawler. It's very interesting when you look through history about how issues that were issues then are still very similar issues today. He um, was a member of the Freemasons Lodge of Gawler, occupied all of the chairs in that order. Um, as I said, in 1857, um, was the first town clerk, <laughs> then continued as a solicitor in Gawler for um, around 23 years said that him and one of the other early lawyers, um, uh, Mr. Turner, used to pack the Gawler courtroom to, um, with, with crowds to, to watch them performing their, their, uh, their cases. Um, and um, you know, looking back through the newspaper reports of what those cases were about, it was very quite similar to the sorts of things that happened to, today. There were issues about people not paying child support for their children, um, drunk and disorderly seemed to come up quite a quite a bit um, in, in Gawler in, the, in those early days, and um, also was um, um, you know, often reported in the in the Bunyip about how the large audiences in the in the gallery of the court would come and watch the skillful encounters of Mr. Riddell and Mr. Turner. In eight, 
he later became a magistrate, the Gawler's resident magistrate, um, and was a resident magistrate sitting in the Gawler court for, for many years, um, until um, in 1888, um, it was decided that um, he had spent enough time in Gawler and was asked to go, or told, to, that he had to go to Port Augusta. And, um, there was quite a lot of um, opposition to that from the town of Gawler. What was described as a public indignation meeting was held um, and um, lots of affectionate farewells in the courthouse of him, um, talking of the, and he spoke of the pain of his departure from the town in which he'd lived so long in which um, all of his ten children had been, had been born. So um, he lived in a house that still stands, as far as I can work out, it was the house that's on the corner of Finnis and Cowan Street. Um, the southwestern corner of, of that was um, uh, John Riddow's house. So he was moved to uh, Port Augusta um, and um, uh, despite the opposition of um, the uh, what was described the town as a as a whole. Um, in his obituary, he was described as a gen gentlemanly, dignified, bearing man of with refined tastes, courteous, considerate to all who came in contact with him, and he commanded the genu genuine respect of his fellow citizens and the affection of his friends. Um, Educational attainments were of no mean order, and he could freely converse uh, in three languages, English, French, and Italian. For those of you here that read The Bunyip, and I know there's been a lot of interest in that already tonight, um, we have in our building a, an old safe, and within that safe was, we found this, this box. Um, and then years ago, we said that's a bit of an ugly box, and it got put out in the archive room out the back. But it's a fascinating thing, and I encourage you to have a look at it at the, at the end of, the, uh, of, of tonight's talk. But um, a thank you to Peter Hoy, who is here somewhere. I can't see him at the moment. There he is, hiding behind, behind Frankie. Um, this box with a royal warrant on it, so that wasn't something that was available to too many people, and there'd be very few of those in Australia. Um, still in reasonably good condition, but it's a box that weighs way too much to carry. Um, it's um, obviously a, a strong room fireproof box, and it, when it was found in, a, in our safe, it actually contained some old D packets with um, titles and conveyance deeds and wills and that sort of thing from way back early in our practice in the in the um, mid 18th. 1800s. Um, so um, very, very heavy, very thick, thick box, and, and one with a fair bit of history in it. So should have clicked. Keep forgetting to click. Nick, you were supposed to be my clicker. Um, its its history dates back to some time after. It was made sometime after 1814, but obviously came out on the boat with him in the in the 1850s. So one of John's sons was Samuel Bruce. Um, Samuel Bruce was um, obviously born in, in Gawler. He was the second son um, of um, John and his wife Matilda. He was educated originally at Mr Smiley's school in Gawler. I don't know where Mr Smiley's school was, but um, and, and later at St Peter's College. Um, he was articled, now that's sort of like an apprenticeship as a, as a lawyer, um, firstly to his father, but also to a G and J Downer in Adelaide. Um, after his father left the position as town clerk of Gawler, Samuel, or Bruce as he was known in his family, um, took that position over and um, stayed there until he entered Parliament in 1906. Um, the um, he stayed involved with the, with the firm despite his um, involvement in Parliament to, to some degree. Later, um, his, after his first wife died, um, he um, married Alice Warren, who was, a, was also a downer and lived at Stirling, but still came back to Gawler on a regular basis, I understand it. He um, 
had a, an office in, identified here as um, solicitor and notary public in Murray Street. Unfortunately, all of the addresses in those days were Murray Street, so it's a little bit hard to find exactly where it was. Um, and um, we're not exactly sure where the, the building, uh, the, the office was prior to its, its current location. One of the books that we have in our, um, in, in our office is, is this book here that was written by a guy called Peter Wells about the four Rudals that, that he knew. And within that book was um, a quote from, from Samuel Bruce, um, which I won't read all of them, but um, he has ten reasonable rules to live by. Never put off till tomorrow what you should do today. Never trouble others for what you can do yourself. This will promote independence. Never spend your money before you have it. This will save you from many difficulties and some temptation. Never buy what you do not want because it is cheap. Never have to repent of eating too much. Temperance is health. How much pain have those evils cost us that never happened? Wait until trials come. Take things always by their smooth hand. Make the most of mercies and do not exaggerate trials. And my favourite, when angry, count to ten before you speak. If very angry, a hundred. <laughs> he who does that will save himself from much sin and many sorrows. Now, having recited that to my, my staff the other day, they said, so that's what you're doing in your office, is it? When we, when we walk in, when you're ignoring us, I said, yes, counting to a hundred. <laughs> Good rules for your mouth. Never speak evil of one of another. Guard against low and vulgar language. Eat with thankfulness what is set before you and never smoke nor drink any intoxicating drinks before you are 20. <laughs> After that, obviously, free reign. Um, Samuel Bruce was also the first secretary of the Thomas Hutchinson estate, so that's something that's been... Uh, obviously, was the, the setting up of the, the Gawler Hospital originally and, and something that Riddell and Riddell has had some interest in for some time. As the town clerk of Gawler for 25 years, when he left, he was presented with this clock, which still sits on a mantelpiece in our, in our office. Um, I don't know who those three gentlemen are there. Um, the one in the front is Tony Bills, and on the left is Stephen Arthur, but I don't recognise the guy with dark hair and um, very slim, but anyway. Um, that, that clock, quite a magnificent piece there still works when it's wound up um, and um, it's um, uh, yeah, uh, it shows the sort of appreciation of, of, of what he did um, prior to his, his uh, for, the, for the town of Gawler I should say during his time as a member of parliament the town of Rudell and the Air Peninsula was named after him, now, it was a place that I'd always intended to go the, and um, a couple of years ago I did, and I found the most interesting thing, it's a bit rude, but the most interesting thing in the town of Riddell was this sign. Um, it's a town with not very much happening anymore. A typical old railway town in um, you know, about an hour to the west of Cleve. So um, it, it, it was nice to see, to see that town. Um, lots of little articles which are going to be very difficult for you guys to, to read but um, the um, shows the involvement that um, Riddell and Riddell has had um, in many different things o o over the years. Um, Gilda Jubilee celebration in 1887 um, had a budget of £24 um, to, to obviously put on a, a bit of a show. Um, for, for 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 the for the jubilee in, in 1887, um, copies of citizens' letters and a roll call. So if you were a citizen of Gawler and wanted your name recorded, um, as the town clerk, you put an advert in the paper saying "Turn up to the Gawler Arms Hotel or the post office or um, the courthouse and put your name on the on the list of citizens of Gawler." And um, the last one is seeking use of tenders um, for, the, for the use of the market allotment 
for a year. I'm not even sure where the market allotment is, but in the 17th of July, 1893, um, they were obviously looking for that. Whether that was the northern market, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't, it doesn't say. Um, going on, I won't spend too long on, on this slide. Um, some legal advice was published in the, in the paper. I'm not quite sure what the idea behind that, that was, but um, whether the Gawler South Football Oval was um, able to lease, you know, the council was able to lease the land to, to Gawler South Football Club, um, whether the Gawler Oval should have a board of management. Um, the second one from the left talks about the breach of Sunday trading by law and whether or not the two business houses at the south end of Murray Street have been charged with breaches of this and there was a hearing in the, in the courthouse about whether or not they should prosecute for that or whether the law should be repealed. Um, one of John's other sons was um, John Riddell Jr. He was obviously the older son, Samuel Bruce. Um, couldn't find out too much about him other than um, he became a solicitor and uh, practised out of Kapunda. So, um, married uh, Eliza, the daughter of Mr. William Brewer. So Law was obviously very much in the family of, um, of, of the Rudows. The third Rudow that we had, um, Reg, obviously born in 1885, lived through until 1955. Mm -hmm. um, born in Gawler, was the eldest child of Samuel and his wife Margaret. He attended Miss Burton's private school in Gawler then Queen's, the Queen's College School in Adelaide and, and, and also St Peter's. Um, studied law at the University of Adelaide. Um, practiced with his father and also the G and date J Downer again. Um, very good sportsman, played football, cricket, tennis, hockey. He was a Rhodes Scholar, um, 1908. And um, his, um, I don't think that's been printed in here, but his, his application um, is, is, is in this book, if anyone wants to see his handwriting um, and, and his application, it's, it's in this book, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. Um, one of the things that made him a candidate for the Rhodes Scholar, obviously his academic achievement as a, as a lawyer, but also his sporting achievements and something that... Um, very, very rare, playing a cricket match, the corporation, um, the town of Gawler against, who was it, Nick? Didn't write it down for me, sorry. Um, anyway, he, he, he was playing this, this cricket match, obtained five wickets in a row. Five for... Eight wickets in ten balls. Eight wickets in ten balls, so obviously, was it one, one ball in the, in the middle that he didn't, didn't get a wicket? So... Um, there's a reference in this book to John Bradman saying that he had never heard of that being done by anybody else. Mm. So, um, Reg Riddell came back, practiced law here, um, married in, 18, in 1914, sorry, two sons, um, John and Peter, um, went to the First World War, so he came back and Captain Riddell has resumed practice with Riddell and Riddell solicitors in Gawler, according to the Bunyip in the 20th of June in 1919. Um, he was also a chairman of the Hutchinson Hospital Board and a trustee of the estate. He became a member of parliament in 1938, um, commissioner of Crown Lands, minister of lands, minister of repatriation, minister of irrigation, and also attorney general. So reasonably distinguished parliamentary career there. Um, some photos of him, you know, typical that sort of dress is still seen in the in some of the courts today. Um, photo of him over um, with the Prince of Wales obviously whilst he was was in England and um, with uh, meetings of, of cabinet um, as well. So one of the things, and I'm just going to walk over here very quickly, um, that he presided over was the 1934-1935 Fishing Commission, and a print that we got hanging in our in our office. May not look that fantastic from a distance, but it's got all of the fingerprints of the 
Hansard reporters recording the 9,968 questions asked by the Royal Commission on the Fishing Industry of 373 witnesses. Um, Reg Ridal was the chairman of, the, of, of that um, and presented to him on October 17th, 1935. Mm. So, Royal Commission into the fishing industry, I'm not sure mm. what that was about, haven't, haven't found that, but um, I'm sure somebody might like to research that at, at some stage. He also became a lecturer at Adelaide University of Constitutional Law. Um, it's a record of him having given a speech about how saying in the 1930s that federalism was not working and the states should be abolished. Again, typical of issues that were issues then are perhaps still issues today. Uh, he, whilst was, he was in England on his Rhodes Scholars trip, often contributed articles to the Bunyip, and there's a few of them. In the, um, that, that, that we found talking of the cycling tour around the old country, the Isle of Wight and the New Forest. So that's information that's readily accessible if you're looking through the, the old articles there. Um, in his parliamentary career, he um, became um, absolute grip, near absolute majority for him. Um, and um, show, showing photos of him, of, of him there. Again, the trend of publishing your legal opinions in the in the paper when you were advising counsel um, found that fascinating that 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 occurred. Um, no power to control parking over its park lands. It was um, it was um, council was unable to regulate parking on the park lands in 1950. Obviously, that has now now changed. Caricatures of him, yeah, cartoons, 1947, industrial progress under the rural leaders and um, him and uh, Mr Duncan showing that they were elected unopposed um, to, to, to Parliament at that stage. So Reg and his wife Kathleen had two sons, Peter and Jake. Um, it was always intended that they would become lawyers and join the firm, but um, World War Two intervened and both of their sons were killed in World War Two. Mm. Peter on the HMAS Sydney when that went down in November of 41, and Jake in um, Papua New Guinea in December of 1942. So some articles there. Um, you see, that had a <laughs> profound impact on them to lose your two children in, in, in the war and um, they became heavily involved with the, with the RSL um, up, right up until quite recently we, we were administering some funds that were to maintain the garden which um, came out of um, Mrs Rudell's estate. Um, so someone he was asking me how long does an executor last um, in that case, the executor's role lasted for a long time because um, they had to administer this trust fund for looking after the, the, the gardens. So um, that, um, and someone else was telling me of the generosity that they had to other servicemen um, as a result of, of that. On a slightly happier note, perhaps to outdo their, their father, there's the story in 1939 of the first hole-in-one at the Gawler Golf Course. Um, Jake and Peter were playing golf out there and um, <coughs> it's re reported in the paper, so it must be true that, um, the, um, that Peter got a hole-in-one, the first one ever to be recorded at the, at the Gawler Golf Course. So, you see the sporting achievements ran in that family um, very, very much. The lack of the generational plan for their children to come involved um, is probably what brought the Bills family to, to Gawler. Although Lawrence Bills um, was, was born in, in Gawler, he graduated in, in 1937, started working in, in Adelaide, was married, um, also became a member of the Hutchison Hospital Board of Management um, from 1938. 
1946 and became chairman from then and through until 1953. He also went to, went to war. Um, he was charter member of the Rotary Club, um, secretary president of the Thomas Hutchinson Estate, an active member of the St George's Church of England, chairman of the St George's Trust, enjoyed a game of golf and tennis, and keen interest in motor car mechanics, electronics, and pipe organs and other electrical musical instruments. And there was this lovely article that we found from the Bunyip in 1942 of um, Laurie, as he, as he was known, um, solicitor in the firm of Riddell and Riddell, called him to camp. Um, I assume took up duties last week, played a big part in the raising of money and inducement of new recruits at the Victory Square by providing and manipulating the loudspeaker, comma, his own machine. So he had made this loudspeaking machine, as it was called then, and he donated that to the town of Gawler. And when I mentioned that to Brian Tom, he said, I wonder where it is now. It's in the room, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other article there is a discussion about whether or not the um, Williston Memorial Hall could, um, in the terms of the trust from Mr Paxton's will, who made his will in 1865, could, could continue or whether it could no longer be um, fulfilled. It was for the purpose of the school in Williston, so I suspect the answer was it could no longer be fulfilled. So Laurie was um, involved in the in the firm right up until his death in, in 1975. Um, and prior to that time, his son Tony um, uh, came came to the firm. He um, did his articles with his father in 1968 and was admitted as a lawyer in 1968. Tony was known to probably everybody in this in this room. He was a magnificent mentor to me. Um, always extremely generous with his time and his knowledge. Always wanting to help other people. Involved in so many different things around Gawler. Um, Greatly missed. <laughs> he was the office handyman. He was always making things for our office, and some of which is, uh, are still in use. Uh, you know, um, um, a whiteboard that's got a really beautiful frame around it that, that Tony made. And as I was walking into the office this morning, thinking about tonight, I looked at our brass park out the front and thinking, Tony really needs to come back and clean that because it <laughs> hasn't been cleaned for a while. So that was certainly one of his, one of his passions. So uh, great lawyer, um, worked with us through until 2009 um, in very difficult circumstances towards the end, but always, always willing to, to help, help us out. So our current team, um, as I said, we've got, it's not all of them, but that's the ones we have current photos of. Um, some of the other things that as, as lawyers we did, public notices in, in there, um, can't read those, um, but advertisements for land for sale, six built, valuable building locks on Old North Road at Williston, apply to Riddell and Riddell Gawler. Um, Notice is given of my intention after the expiration of one calendar month after the publication of this notice to take such steps as may be necessary to ensure the incorporation of the Williston War Memorial Community Centre Incorporated. Um, just, I find it fascinating the various different um, ways that you know, ad adverts and you know, all of these were put in by Redonda Redal for, for one reason or another, the 20s, and 40s and, and, and 50s here. Um, farm and clearing sale, 20 dairy cows, the Ford Prefect um, for, for sale. Public notice again about the Williston War Memorial Community Centre. Um, Mr Walker um, looking for claims against his, his estate. Um, anybody who believes uh, Mr. Walker owes the money, speak now or never get your money. Um, change, of, change of name of Herbert Clarence I, 
previously known as Herman Carl I of, of Gola. <laughs> That's probably a really good spot to, to, to take a break because that's probably all I wanted to say about the, the, um, the legal firm as such, but I consider the building that we, we occupy as a sort of part, part of our identity. Um, used to be known as just Murray Street Gawler, also known as 20 Murray Street Gawler, but now known as 25 Murray Street Gawler. The building didn't move, just the numbering. Um, the architect that designed that building was a Thomas English, um, and uh, Henry Brown built built that in 1859. Its first owner was the Bank of South Australia, or South Australian Banking Company. Um, it was then became known the Union Bank of Australia, who. Um, long before it was sold, merged with the ANZ, so it must have been vacant for, for quite, a, quite a long time. Um, the third owner was basically the, the firm of Riddell and Riddell, and we've been there since about 1928. Um, first building in Murray Street of some architectural pretension was the South Australian Banking Company building of 1859. Style of the building derives from the very early Victorian Renaissance revival of Roman palazzos um, and the, the southern, at the southern entrance of the township, this major landmark considered Gawler's greatest ornament. Reasonably proud about that. Um, in 1915, when this is sort of a little bit off topic, but there's this advert that says Riddell and Riddell Simpson's Gawler have removed to their new offices near the Savings Bank on Monday the 1st of November. I don't actually know where that office was. Um, it, I don't know if anyone remembers it, the firm moving in 1915, perhaps not, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't into this building that long before it was purchased. It, might have been, but I don't know where the savings bank was, whether that is what was Bank SA and is, is, is now Maxima or, or where it's somewhere else. So I haven't been able to, 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 to work that out. I was hoping someone here might say, oh yes, I know that, but perhaps not. So a couple of photos of inside, I don't know how clear they are to, to you. Um, our reception area on the, on the left there, with the old panelling from um, when it was originally a bank. The, the room that we call the Riddell room, which is one of our, our conference rooms. Big photo of the, the three Riddells up on the, on the wall there. That's the whiteboard I was talking to you about with the nice frame around it. Oh, I've gone two there. No, I haven't. Um, being a bank originally, this um, building has got a big, big safe, um, and you can just see the the edge of the of the door there. Um, and over the years, it's been used like any good old home. Um, measures the height of all of the people who've ever worked <laughs> worked there. So. Um, I think there's one up the top here, Craig McLaughlin, many of you would know Steve McLaughlin and Julie who's worked with us for many, many years. Um, I think that was as high as he could reach that day. Um, but, um, anyway, and, and inside the, the old deed packets, many of which we brought along to, today. Um, underneath this safe, and that little picture you can see in the top right hand corner is a little bit of slate that looks like it's cracked. He actually can be lifted up and you find this circular hole around about that thick through the concrete that's about that thick. Um, and, um, and you can see in the corners of the safe these drain pipes in the, in the corners and, and, and what happened was that the rainwater from the roof used to flow into this well underneath the safe tank underneath the safe and obviously it, it then flowed out when the, when the tank was full but the idea of that was 
that if you ever tried to bury, you know, tunnel your way into the safe, you were going to get very, very wet doing so. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a, a dry, very dry cellar under there now. There are some old documents down there, which I did one day many years ago go and have a look at, but you're relying on someone making sure that this piece of slate on top is held open whilst you are down there. There's no lights down there and there's no way out other than climbing the ladder that you've put in there to, to, to do it and you probably never get that piece of slate up from, from under there. So I didn't spend a lot of time down there. But um, fascinating way that they thought that was, that was, was, was the best security. And I guess, you know, the walls are literally that thick. Um, all, all the way, all the way around. So tunnelling through the walls would be um, quite an quite an achievement, anyway. But to, to find um, a, a tank that would be six metres square and probably three metres deep, um, full of water gushing down on you if you did try and tunnel in, would would be quite a shock. One of our other conference rooms um, called the the Bills Room. Um, lots of old books on there, which we had a bit of a debate today about how often we use them, what are they doing there, but still occasionally read them. It's not all on, online. So, um, and the old table that um, I think the story is that somebody couldn't pay their legal bill, so they said, here, have this table, and what a magnificent table it, it, it is. Um, some of the other people that have, have worked in this in this building over the years, um, Brian Colton was um, one, of, one of the partners. He started off in the 1940s as an accountant, later later became a lawyer and worked through to his retirement in the 1990s. Um, John Atkinson joined as a lawyer in the mid 1970s and worked through until about 2002. Um, John Bolton started his legal career with us. Um, and McKinnon's work with us. Jessica Budden came here as an experienced lawyer and her husband Leon became a law student whilst working working for us and became later became a lawyer. Stephen Arthur would be a name that most of that a lot of you would remember, came up and took over the tax practice that was part of Redal and Redal um, in the early nineteen nineties and moved through to various um, um, different different organisations but you know started his connection with Gawler, uh, with Riddell and Riddell. So many, many people been through our through our office. Um, 2015 is shown on our on our um, uh, timeline. There, um, we opened an office in Adelaide, and that's still there for those clients that used to know us and have been to see us in uh, in Gawler. Um, you know, if they've moved away, they can still come and see us and get there legal advice from us but whilst in, whilst in Adelaide. The next little part of my talk will be a little bit about um, various documents and there's lots up here and I think the best way of looking at them is probably just to come and have a really good look at them um, after I finish speaking. But um, various forms of letterhead over the years from the 1940s, 1970s um, and um, Later in the 1990s, it became a little bit more stylized, and then went back to this Gothic print here. Um, in the early 2000s, we adopted this thing here, which was based a little bit on John Rudell's handwriting. And one of the things I noticed when I went to Rudell, and why I find that sign so interesting, is that that the way that Rudell was written there was very similar to the way we used to used to write it. So. I, I, I thought that was fascinating, and the main reason I took that sign, apart from the fact that there was only a few old houses and a rusty shed to, to take photos of, while I, uh, apart from that. Some of the documents that we've got here um, the, um, been entrusted with us for safekeeping over, over the years. Um, the blueprints for the St George's Church bell tower. Um, some conveyance and you know, we showed this to our, our current staff and said right this is how I want you to write on um, every document that we produce you have to be a calligraphy artist to be able to, to do that. Um, 
you know, we keep most of these little things in envelopes in the safe, some of which were found in that box years ago, others they actually are um, still well indexed in our, in our safe and occasionally you do need to, to find, find old documents but um, these are probably things that are not going to be needed. Mr Rudell's will from 1897, I reckon if he hasn't needed it yet, he probably doesn't anymore. So, photos of documents, um, probates, letters of administrations. Um, relatively recently, instead of having a look at you know, documents like that, you now don't get anything from the probate registry anymore. You get told you can go and download this rather unimpressive looking piece of paper from the, from the court um, is, is now your document. So whilst it would have been quite difficult to, to write that out and you get to here and you realise you made a mistake and have to start again, um, there's a certain fascination with these, these types of, do, uh, of documents. Certainly look impressive when you, when you see them in, in person there. So, there were other lawyers in, in Gawler, and I did say I would talk about the others, and perhaps in the next five or ten minutes that I've got left, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, the first solicitor in, in town was a guy called John Edwin Gamo. Um, he was a solicitor in London, came to Australia, settled in, in Gawler. Um, March 1855, as the clerk of the District Council of Mudlawira. Um, he was also appointed a magistrate in 1856, but he left Gawla to go to Montacute to take up stock raising. I assume that's cattle and such rather than um, shares. F.F. <laughs> um, Turner, this was the guy that I referred to earlier that used to spar off in the Gawler court with, with John Rudow. He was the second solicitor which established himself in Gawler. Um, he was also a member of the Gawler Anglican, Anglican Parish and a councillor for the South Ward. Um, he was later appointed as a solicitor to the Land Titles Office in 1880 um, and Registrar General of the Real Property Act, um, also part of the Land Titles Office, became a magistrate sitting in Adelaide. Um, was a trustee and executor of the estate of the Lane James Fotheringham, a name that was obviously still very current in, in Gawler. Mr Lewis and his son, Mr Lewis, um, were uh, um, sons of a doctor from Ireland, immigrated to South Australia in 1851, settled near Gawler, um, started off as a telegraph station operator, um, then became a solicitor and in 91. Um, purchased the ANZ Bank, later sold it to the, the Union Bank. It's interesting. Um, anyway, um, joined by his brother, so, uh, Fred, uh, Frederick Lewis, sorry, not his son, his brother, um, and um, started to print this firm, the name Lewis Blackburn McCann and Harneman. They later became the firm of Harneman, Taylor and, and Pike. Colin Pike, um, solicitor in, in Gawler, um, came to Gawler in uh, 1954. Um, he was articled to an RF Mitchell, and I said to Nick after he wrote that, would that be Rhyma Mitchell? And we think it is, because her middle initial was F as well. So um, he was involved in the Law Society, um, retired in 1998 when um, we took over his, his practice. His practice was, like a lot of lawyers in the country in, in those days, a tax agency practice as, as well as law. So, Another interesting character from, from Gawler was um, Kingsley Payne, later Sir Herbert Kingsley Payne. He was born in Gawler, his father died when he was quite young, and he was raised by um, Samuel Bruce Riddell. He was articled to Mr Lewis, 1902, and then later went to Gilberton, um, graduated from university around about that time, admitted in 1905. He conducted a practice in Port Piri and Gawla for three years. I don't know how you would do that in 1905. You would spend a fair bit of time travelling between the two places. 
became a judge um, of the local court and later of the Supreme Court. Um, 1950, 51, presiding mostly over the divorce cases, claims for damages and um, traffic infringements. It was knighted in 1953. He then became a judge in the bankruptcy court and continued doing that until his 89th birthday. So, um, would have seen a lot of people go bankrupt in, in, in that period of, period of time. So, the other lawyers in Gawler today, um, obviously we are still around, um, but um, the other lawyers, Gawler Legal, Budden, Stephen Clark, Scammells, Lewis and Shane. So that is the history of the legal profession in Gawler, according to myself and Nick. So thank you for your attention. Ray, Ray will now perform the vote of thank you. Ray, if you could be closer to... Yeah, the um, Peter Ryan and uh, his faithful helper, Nick. Well done, mate. Uh, <laughs> Nick did all the research. I don't just stand up here and take the glory. <laughs> I would sincerely like to thank you very much for the talk tonight. Um, it's a subject that's probably close to my heart as well. I work in the court system, so I get to meet these guys in the court system, and uh, I know how very hard and uh, uh, what it's all about, the work that they do, um, and they are great people. You may be on the wrong side of them, but if you're on the right side of these guys here, they certainly look after you. So on behalf of the group here, I'd sincerely like to thank you for tonight's talk, and um, Nick for his help as well. And uh, I'd like to accept these. Thank you. Thank you very much.